This could be one of my favorite places that I've visited so far. It is Carretero, Mexico, located in the Central Highlands. There is so much history and the entire city is vibrant and charming. Carretero is just under 6,000 feet in elevation, placing it well over a mile above sea level. I've had warm days and cool nights. The population here is just over a million, but it seems much smaller than that. Let's get to some of the main sights to see in this gorgeous city. If you've ever seen or heard anything about this city, it probably has something to do with the aqueduct. This is what is left of the system that brought fresh water to the city of Carretero from a distant spring in the 18th century. 74 stone arches remain from the aqueduct, which stopped bringing water to the city in the 1960s. They stretch for a distance of almost 1.3 kilometers and reach a maximum height of 28.5 meters, which is nearly 100 feet. A group of nuns put out a plea for help long ago because fresh water was non-existent and people were getting sick. A man named Marquis Juan Antonio answered the call. He not only designed the aqueduct and had it built, but paid for the majority of it. He was an engineer in Spain. He had also worked in many other aqueducts. He just made the same thing here in Querétaro. Construction of the feature took place over nine years. Construction of the aqueduct began on December 26 of 1726 and ended on October 15 of 1735. The aqueduct was considered a major engineering accomplishment and nearly 300 years later still stands as a testament to its durability. The main flow of water ended near this spot and it was then diverted to a number of public fountains throughout the center of Carretero. While no longer fed by the aqueduct, several of those fountains are still operational today. You can see them at various locations around the city. The best spot to get a view of the entire length of what is left of the aqueduct is at the Mirador de los Arcos, or the Arches Lookout. That is a popular gathering spot, especially late in the day. Not only does this location provide a complete overview of the 74 remaining arches, it is a phenomenal place to get a look at Carretero and how it spreads over the valley and up on the nearby hills. A kilometer or two away is the Carretero River. It is not a very imposing waterway and it is far from pristine at this point. Going back over three centuries, it has never been a viable source for clean drinking water. If you see it now, you will see that it is very polluted. But that pollution isn't recent. That pollution came from the 18th century. There is a nice path that follows along beside the river for a bit. You can't help but imagine what a prime spot this could be if a major restoration of the channel was undertaken. Marquis Juan Antonio is still lauded today for what he did for the people of Carretero. A statue of him stands in the Plaza de Armas. Fittingly, there is a water feature associated with the statue. It is called the Fountain of the Doggies. The entire plaza here is one of the nicest and greenest squares in the city. It's a great place to hang out, complete with shade, restaurants, and shops adjacent to it. The Plaza de Armas has even more of a historic connection, though. It is also known as the Plaza of Independence. That is because of this house, located to one side of the square. So this is where the Mexican independence movement began, right here? Yep, exactly. You've heard from Carlos and you'll see him some more. He was my guide for a very reasonably priced tour of the center. As many in Mexico yearned for their independence from Spain, the Carretero mayor's wife, Josefa, was key in the effort. Organization took place through a book club held in the house and secret notes were passed to rebels when those in power became aware of the planning. Not far away, a statue erected in 1910 pays tribute to Josefa and the part she played in Mexico gaining its independence from Spain. Carretero played a major role in that independence movement and was a center in many other important stages in Mexico's history. A case in point is this building. At some point, this became the government palace because Querétaro at some point also became the capital of the country. That was not just a one-time occurrence either. Counting the unofficial times that 
Querétaro was the capital of the country, it was like five or six times. Four decades after gaining independence from Spain, the French got involved with Napoleon III installing Maximilian as emperor in Mexico. Within a few years, the Mexican people rose up again and carried out a successful revolution. Carretero, again, was at the heart of it all with this building, the Teatro de Republica, the site of numerous milestones. The first one is that this is where Maximilian was sentenced to death. The second one was that this is the place where the Constitution was signed. And my favorite event is that this is the place where the national anthem was first heard. Locals are still proud of this spot. It is a wall which had a sizable hole opened up in it by a cannonball during the latter stages of that conflict in 1867. As a way of remembering, the hole in the wall was never repaired. It is another way to recognize the major part that Carretero has played over the course of Mexican history. There's a place in the city where the history goes back so much farther. This is the El Cerrito Archaeological Park. The main feature here is hard to miss. It is a pyramid that many people didn't even know existed until well into the 20th century. The pyramid reaches 30 meters in height and sits on a square base that is 118 meters on each side. People began living in this area around 300 BCE or before the Common Era. Pyramid started taking shape well after that. The Toltecs expanded the feature into one of the largest in present-day Mexico. The Toltecs were here during the period from 900 to 1200 CE. By 1300, the pyramid was fully developed. Not long ago, people thought this was simply a hill. Trees and vegetation obscured the structure. Clearing all of that and turning it into what is seen today began in 1995. Now, this site is unbelievably fascinating. This is actually in a suburb of Carretero. You could take an Uber, a taxi, probably even a bus. I didn't look into any of that. I just made this my morning walk. It's about 18 kilometers round trip from where I'm staying in the center. That's about 11 miles. But man, what a payoff when you get here. Other evidence of a town associated with the pyramid has been uncovered. A small museum on site explains the history of El Cerrito and displays some of the relics that have been discovered here. It is a superb way to spend a morning being totally surprised by a significant archaeological site on the outskirts of a large metropolitan area. I've been wandering around the site now for about 20 or 30 minutes and I've not seen another person except for the people who work here in that entire time. There was a group of school kids that was coming in at the same time that I did at the entrance. I have no idea where they went. There is a fee for admission here, but it is only about four U.S. dollars, and that includes entry into the museum. Back in Carretero, one of the things you will notice are the many large churches scattered about. Just in El Centro, there are 16 churches, not counting other smaller shrines. The architecture of most of the structures is stunning. Most of the time when stepping inside, the interior is every bit as impressive. I'll specifically mention just a couple of the churches. The church and convent of Santa Cruz is beautiful, and the square in front of it was a gathering place close to where I stayed. This is just a couple hundred meters from my Airbnb. I passed this spot virtually every day that I was in Carretero. Another church of note is the Templo de Santa Rosa de Viterbo. It was built during the period spanning the late 17th century and early 18th century. For those interested in such things, it could be a full day wandering around central Carretero exploring the various churches. That would include marveling at the architectural elements and walking through the doors to see the beauty held within. A small chapel and cemetery is associated with the church and convent of Santa Cruz. This is called the Pantheon of Illustrious Caritanos. Sculptures of those who are enshrined here cover the grounds. All sorts of important figures in the city's history are remembered at this spot, some from the quest for Mexican independence and others from more recent times. I have read that there is still room for other illustrious residents to be honored here going forward. There is a famous sculpture in Carretero, which can be seen in two different locations. One of those is in a building that once served as city hall and is now the site of other governmental offices. 
The structure contains other pieces of art, as well as a Model T Ford on prominent display. It's sort of an unlikely setting for this, a sculpture of Neptune, which dates to the 1700s. This is one of the most famous statues that we have in the city. This is the original. This piece was once out in a location where more people could see it. Made of limestone, keeping it exposed to the elements and in a spot where it could be harmed was too much of a risk. The sculpture was moved to a safer place. Now a short distance away is a replica of the statue. It is made of bronze and is part of a fountain. You'll notice many statues, sculptures, and similar monuments all over the heart of Queretaro. 1,440 different monuments. Many of the pieces are truly spectacular. With so many in a relatively small space, a person does not have to walk far before seeing another. Many of the monuments date to the 17th and 18th centuries. They have drawn attention from the outside world. That's why UNESCO decided that this city would become a world's heritage. In recognizing Queretaro as a World Heritage Site, UNESCO mentioned numerous elements within a four square kilometer area consisting of 204 blocks. That includes the monuments, buildings, and even the street layout, which combines features from the Spanish period along with those from indigenous people. Another great feature of Queretaro are the many plazas or squares inside the main part of town. These spots are green spaces, and they usually have a statue or water feature in the middle. They serve as natural gathering spots, and people are certainly willing to take advantage of them. In many of the plazas, vendors run their businesses. Many sell handmade goods, items which have a vibrant look that seems to fit the culture. Street food is also huge inside the small parks. Watching the cooks whip up whatever is on the menu typically assures the would-be diner that they are getting food that is as fresh and tasty as possible. A larger park exists just at the edge of the main heart of the city. It is called Alameda Hidalgo. Talk about a place where residents get together. This is it. The park was laid out and created in the 1790s. That design is the same today, with roads or paths that are straight, perpendicular, and diagonal. Alameda Hidalgo is roughly 330 meters on each of its four sides and boasts a full canopy of trees, water features, and even a loop trail that is around a mile long. This is an all-day park, good for exercise in the morning, cooling off during the heat of the day, and enjoying an evening stroll. There are pieces of art around the periphery of the park. It is fitting because Queretaro has the feel of a very artistic place. This is the city's museum of art. I don't hold myself up to be any sort of art expert, but I did enjoy walking among the different collections here. For the most part, the displays consisted of paintings and sculptures from the 17th through the 19th centuries. The cool thing about this place is that the building is just as, if not more impressive, than the artwork. The building was constructed in the 1700s. It served as the convent for the Church of St. Augustine. Many say that the Baroque-style architecture is so magnificent that it is considered the most beautiful former convent in all of Mexico. I would not dispute that. The structure feels like a piece of art all on its own and an appropriate location for an art museum. It is totally free to visit this place. It's also free to go inside the Queretaro Museum of Contemporary Art. Things aren't nearly as reserved and refined here as at the main museum of art. I found some of the pieces and exhibits to be quite compelling, and I enjoyed my time here. Not every piece is going to appeal to everyone, but there is enough to see so that most people will find something that they like. The final art museum that I went to was probably my favorite. It was all large scale and all outside. It felt like someone gathered all the street art in a city and brought it all to one location. This is the Museum of Urban Art, located at the Educational Cultural Center of the state of Queretaro. I was taken with the different worlds that the artists created in this space. That being said, the art did seem a bit weathered, and while that didn't inhibit my enjoyment, it made me wonder how incredibly vibrant all of this would have been at an earlier time. Once again, there was no admission charge to see all of this. Just walking around the city, I constantly happened upon little pockets of art. 
This display featured 56 paintings that are replicas of artwork housed in the Museum of Prada in Madrid, Spain. It was cool to witness the cultural exchange and have a chance to see full-size pieces that would have otherwise remained a half a world away. This was temporary, and I turned the corner one morning to find that it had disappeared. In another spot, there were some incredible photographic images for the public to see. This was adjacent to the Church of Santa Rosa that I mentioned earlier. The display showed plants and animals from numerous countries. Those shots carried the theme of biodiversity in the face of climate change. Just steps away from both the display and the church are the Curatoro letters, designed to form a backdrop for selfies and other social media moments. Apparently, it's not a true destination if there aren't letters spelling out the name. Every city needs a great market, and that is certainly the case here. This is Mercado La Cruz. It is situated just a short distance from El Centro. There is a tremendous amount of variety within the location. Vendors sell clothes and other similar goods, but the primary focus is on food. There is a ton of fresh produce, with fruits and vegetables arranged in a very pleasing manner. Where this market goes from good to great, however, is within the stations that essentially create street food for market attendees. Just look at the amazing dishes that are being turned out in these small cooking spaces. I can attest to the fact that the aroma from what is created hits the senses every bit as hard as these visuals. In my experience, the vendors as a group were kind and friendly, even to someone just walking around with a camera who showed no signs of buying anything. I want to mention a couple of other places that I have liked in Carretero. I turned up several mornings at El Palicio del Chocolate, or the Chocolate Palace. I was looking for coffee a few days ago and stopped by this place, and because of the name, I decided to give a chocolate drink a try. I'm so glad I did. It's wonderful, it has a really fruity flavor to it. A drink that I took too quickly was chocolate con agua, or a chocolate drink made not with milk, but with water. At the same time that I got the chocolate, I noticed the menu and I noticed the food in front of some other diners and knew I had to give it a shot. This is called huevos divorciados. It's eggs, tortillas, and two different kinds of sauces, a salsa verde and a salsa roja. Looks really good. It not only looked good, but it was exceptionally flavorful. It was as if I got to try two different things off the menu. At the other end of the day, one of my favorite spots for a beer was Cerveceria Hercules. It was away from the heart of the city, in a cool little neighborhood, in a building that has been repurposed. The setting was maybe the best that I've seen in all of my travels. The beer was quite good as well. This is a Super Lupe. It's an IPA, 7% alcohol, and it's quite tasty. This was a great way to finish one of my first days in Carretero. Carretero is wildly fascinating and many different elements combine to make it so. When people learned that I was going to Mexico, many expressed concern for my safety. I acknowledge that there are many regions of the country that are not where tourists should consider visiting. Carretero, however, is not one of those spots and I feel as comfortable and secure here as any place to which I've traveled. This is just the beginning for my stay in Mexico. You will see more of this city in the coming weeks, and I've already scheduled trips to two other nearby towns, which promise to be spectacular. You'll find it all right here on Old, Alone, and Far From Home.